10 seconds. Stand by. And here we go, kicking off day number two here at the Europe Regional 2018 Berlin, Germany. And it is team event number three. We've got two male-females pairs working through this event here. The first pair must go through three rounds of 30 calories on the assault bike and 20 calories. So 30 for the men and then 20 for the ladies. Once they have completed those calories, they will move forward to the deadlift bar. And on the first, down, on the first round, they will perform 21 deadlifts. Second round, they will perform 15 deadlifts. And on the last round, nine deadlifts. Once the first pair is done, the second pair will take the field and they will have to perform one round of 90 calories for the guys, 60 calories for the ladies, followed by 45 deadlifts. 200 kilograms on the bar, so 440 pounds. And the time cap is 17 minutes. And now we've got the first pair already on that deadlift par. Lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride, as the DA, they advance their bar. So on this first round, the teams will advance the bar after every set of seven deadlifts until they get to that 21 rep mark. So lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride, pushing for the early lead here. They're done with their first round and they are back at the assault bike for, again, 30 calories for the gents and 20 for the ladies. the teams now are done with their first round working on that second set of those calories on the assault bike Lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride, almost done with their calories again. And the pair cannot move forward to the deadlift bar before both of the athletes are done with their calories. As you see on lane five, the male athlete from CrossFit East Kilbride is just waiting until the female is ready and then they can advance to the bar and back to those deadlifts. And here we go, lane five. Crossfit East Kilbride, second set of deadlifts. This is 15 repetitions. And they will advance the bar every five reps. The standard for the deadlift here is pretty much the same as we had for the individuals yesterday. So the bar begins from the floor and at the top both athletes must have their knees and hips fully locked out 
and their shoulders need to be behind the bar for that rep to count. A few little details though, here in the team competition, the athletes are not allowed to cross their arms and also they're not allowed to drop the bar down. So they'll have to bring the bar down after the last rep in control or otherwise they will receive a no rep. Back at the bikes at this point, we've got lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride, lane six, CrossFit Watford, and lane eight, CrossFit Nottingham. These three teams leading away here in this event three, heat one. One of these teams will set the time or the score to beat here, which the other teams in the two later rounds will try and chase down. Lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride almost done with their third round of calorie of that assault bike. Female athletes done and now they advance. Last set of deadlifts, nine to do and the bar is advanced every three repetitions. After the last set, both the athletes must touch that chest piece on the floor and that will release the second pair for their portion of this event three. And lane five right now, CrossFit East Kilbride, finishing their first half of this event and they release that second pair from that start mat. And now this pair has to work through 90 and 60 calories on that bike and 45 deadlifts. Right now holding on to second place in this heat, we got CrossFit Nottingham on lane eight as they move to their last set of three deadlifts. Lane six, CrossFit Watford following closely behind. They're on their last set. And the athletes on CrossFit Kilbride are pushing a steady 400 watt pace here. So the others are gonna have to go fast to catch them. We've just passed the nine minute mark here. Time cap for this event is 17 minutes. So these teams will have to hustle, hustle, hustle to get this done within the cap.
after that first part of this event. We had CrossFit Key East Kill Ride, a lane five leading the way. These athletes on lane five are about two thirds of the way through their calories. So we've got around 40 and 60 cows. The athletes on lane 10 with CrossFit 80, 20 are going pretty fast here, trying to catch up. Most of these athletes are going 400 watts, so if you're going faster than that, you might catch the leader. All right, and we have the first hand up, female athlete from Boston East Kilbride almost done with her assault by calories. And the male athlete not far away either, so this looks like East Kilbride is gonna be the first one to advance to that deadlift bar for the second pair. Here they come, lane five. The first pair on to the second portion of this event three, 45 deadlifts. Two hundred kilos on that bar. Nine repetitions here at each one of these sections. And right now we have the female athlete from CrossFit WN getting close to her 60 cows. And the male athlete is not far behind right now, ladies and gentlemen, on lane four. Lane eight, CrossFit Nottingham, their female athlete already done with her calories. And now they're just waiting on the male athlete to get done before they can advance. East Kilbride, lane five, already done with 18 deadlifts. Working towards that 45 rep total count. And CrossFit WN, lane four, the second team on that deadlift bar for the second time. And it seems that on lanes two and three, CrossFit Berserk and Dragon Athletic are getting ready to move on to the deadlift bar, ladies and gentlemen. 17 minute cap here, 14 minutes in, so we've got about three minutes to go. Lane five, CrossFit East Kilbride advancing the bar. They have 18 reps to go. Middle of the field. Lane four, CrossFit WN done with their first set of nine and they're working on that second set right here. And CrossFit Berserk on lane two, holding on the third, the third spot in this heat. Two minutes to go before the time cap. East Kilbride has a chance to finish this event here. 
They only have nine more reps to go. Lane five, East Kilbride. And it's a tight race behind them. CrossFit Faction, lane nine. Making very quick work of these deadlifts as CrossFit WN on lane four is trying to hold on to that second spot as they advance their bar to that second to last section on the floor. Let's show some support for these athletes here. Put your hands together, please make some noise as we're ready, about ready to get the first team across the finish line, lane five, East Kilbride, and they get done in this event at 16.09 unofficially. We still have 30 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. A few teams might be get closer to the finish line. Every rep counts here with 15 seconds left on the clock. Every rep counts. Get on that bar. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. And that does it for heat number one. The first team in the world to finish this event number three, CrossFit East Kilbride. Give them a round of applause and all the rest of the teams here as well, please, ladies and gentlemen. and early ready for day number two in Berlin, Germany. Welcome back to the Velodrome for the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Europe Regional with one day down, two days remaining, and it's everybody's favorite when it comes to regional competition. It's the day known as moving day. We're ready for team event number three, one heat in the books, as we'll have our middle heat of the three coming up next. Brandon Domain, Matt Jakobsen, and Nikki Brazier with you here in Germany. And we take a look at the top 10 on the leaderboard. And there will be one thing to note. It might look a little bit different than it looked if you saw it last night. What we do want to say is that there was a clerical error that was discovered in the points table used during day one. So if you notice the points look a little bit different, you're not going crazy. However, while the points were corrected, everyone in the field is affected equally, and the issues have been corrected moving forward in the competition. Team Poon out, obviously still at the top spot with a first and a second. Fabrikan, Nordfest B, Max Poles, and Mendes Klubin, Team 2, rounding out those five qualifying spots after the opening day. It is moving day, but some of these teams have been looking really, really good throughout the events yesterday. What is going to be interesting will be to follow up today to see if they actually if they move as well, if they build out the leader, if they're being caught up. The event that we're looking at is four time, a male and female pair will do three rounds of 20 and, or, and 30 calories on the assault bike, then moving on to 21, 15, nine partner deadlifts. Once they've completed that task, another male, female pair will do one round of 90 and 60 calories on the assault bike, then moving on to 45 partner deadlifts. The time cap for the uh, event is 17 minutes. And only one of 10 teams thus far able to beat that time cap. One of them hoping to do so. A team we had some high expectations on sitting 20th in the point standings. Hero Race Stolitza. As day number two underway for our next 10 teams. And there's, like we were mentioning, a couple of these teams here in this heat that we thought would be sitting in a lot better position than they are. Well, we did, I mean, it is moving day, and I think a lot of these teams have gone back yesterday and kind of just kind of looked over what it is they need to do to move into the position that they feel they want to be in. One of these teams is Team Norvest right here from, uh, from Denmark. I know that they're a super capable team, and I know that they feel good about this event as well. What I'm looking forward to see is how they stack the team and what they do to get there. So for teams like Hero Race, for Norfest A, how can they uh, maximize their potential to move up, back up the leaderboard starting with this event? What they really need to do is they need to start looking at how they're stacking their team up. 
making sure that the athlete is feeling most comfortable with just standing still and lifting. So I've got a couple of keys right here. One is pacing the assault bike. You don't want to blow yourself up on the assault bike because if you are taxed already once you get to the deadlift, maintaining that lumbar curve is going to be hard. That mid, that straight midline is going to be really, really hard. And you want to go fast reps on the deadlift, minimizing time under tension and making sure to get the work done. The last thing is communication. Should things break down and you need a rest that's not in the game plan to start with, you need to communicate that before you start spending 10 seconds fighting your way out of the hole in the deadlift. Everybody's still on the bike, which actually might be a good sign at this point. You don't want to blow it out in that first run of 30 cal for the men, 20 calories for the ladies. And now we're starting to see some action with that 440 pound deadlift bar. It is offset by about 35 pounds or 15 kilos or so on uh, one side compared to the other. And in an event like this, you're not gonna win it on the assault bike. However, you could quite possibly lose it to quote what Samantha Briggs said yesterday. If you go out too hard, this deadlift is gonna tear you apart really, really fast. they do advance the bar every third of the way through the round. So in this round, the round of 21, it will be every seven reps. Current leader, Red Tower CrossFit, center of the screen. On the left side of the screen is Team Aarhus CrossFit. And I like the way Aarhus is working with the, uh, with the barbell, making sure that they don't get too much tilt on it. If you start tilting it, then one athlete is going to have to work a lot harder than they need to. And that's a good sign as they come back to the assault bikes. Top two have opened up a pretty decent lead as it's only one second between Red Tower and Arus. We would have Hero Race Stolitska, uh, Stolitza about six, seven seconds behind them and that's just after the opening round. You're seeing the athletes from Aarhus right here utilizing slightly different techniques. The female athlete is leaning forward a little bit more using the arms. Male athlete still leaning forward but not quite as much relying a bit more on his legs. There is no right or wrong with that. It's all about how you are built as an athlete. Where do you feel that you're stronger? You want to play to your strengths with this, making sure that you've got something in the tank. I do mention the uh, one out of the 10 teams in heat number one able to beat the time cap. That being East Kilbride, they came in at 16 minutes, seven seconds. But of note, their first pair of athletes, the ones doing this three round version of the uh, 90 or 60 calories and 45 deadlifts were in at about seven minutes and 40 seconds, which was a very, very quick pace. Uh, and the second pair backed it up with a great job on the bike and they held on just barely long enough on the deadlifts. That's another one of the things you need to think about is that you need to make sure that the second pair coming out here feel like they've got enough time to complete the task. If they come out here feeling stressed, they're going to blow themselves on the assault bike. Judges' hands are going up on the bike for Red Tower with one athlete already done. Their female athlete already completed on the bike. That's not a bad idea, actually, right there. Just kind of flushing out a little bit extra with that slow pace on the bike already being completed. And they will make their way back to that 440 pound, 200 kilo bar for the round of 15, five reps in each section of the floor as they've opened up about a four second lead uh, after the assault bike portion of this round. And they still look, they still look really good. They look really fresh, and the thing is, you want to make, like I just said before, minimize the time under tension. You want to make sure you get good, clean reps, avoid the no reps, but spend as little time as possible holding onto that bar. So if you start having to fight for it, maybe a good idea to just put it down, take a breather, and then get back. They're doing a fantastic job, too, uh, basically staying in the phone booth where they're not moving away from that bar. Hands on it, rolling it forward, getting right back into those reps. We didn't see a lot of that in heat number one. We're seeing it here work very efficiently for Red Tower CrossFit as they continue to open up that lead. It holds at about four seconds, but still a bit more than they had after round number one. And I think we're going to see them go a little bit faster on the assault bike now than they did before. They don't have that many reps to go. And like I said, they want to open up the playing field for the rest of the team. And your top two. This lead is significant as nobody else until right now is into their final five deadlifts in the round of 15. Butcher's Lab has just started their round of nine, so it's about a 20 second interval, maybe more than that, going from second to third. 
And that's impressive work. You really have to, if you're the second pair, you really have to appreciate that kind of effort. And it gets you fired up as well when you walk in there. You don't want to let the first pair that open up the playing field for you. You don't want to let them down. That's Team Butcher's lap right here. You see the male athlete a little bit, a little bit taller. He's probably loving life on the assault bike a little bit more than some of the shorter athletes right now. Truth. That's a Danish <laughs> facial expression right there, so I'm not too worried. For our lead two teams, female athlete, first one with the judges' hand up, indicating the final five calories of 20. What I like to see is the athletes not necessarily getting too sunk into the display. I want to keep, I want to keep their eyes up, making sure that they focus on their breathing instead of just leaning forward, getting sucked into the display because it does inhibit the breathing. And Red Tower continuing to use efficiency on the bar as well as efficiency on the bike to increase the lead. As they're off the bikes, six minutes, 57 seconds, nine deadlifts remain, three in each segment of the floor. And four seconds was the old interval. You're looking more at 10 seconds now. Again, 7.40 was the time for the opening pair of athletes for East Kilbride in heat number one, the quickest pair. Also the only team to finish this event in heat one. Three reps remain. And they're starting to get less and less pretty, but it's still effective. And the Aarhus team right next to the uh, to the Red Tower team still looking really, really good as well. As Red Tower makes the touch at seven minutes, 35 seconds unofficially. So they're on to pair number two, which is doing the single round. It's a 15 second lead back to Aarhus CrossFit. And so the Red Tower athletes on the assault bike right now, a little bit shorter. I'm thinking they probably took the, the best deadlift athletes that, that they have. The ones feeling most comfortable with the deadlift on the second round. Next to them on the left-hand side, we've got uh, CrossFit Aarhus. And uh, CrossFit Aarhus have Philip Young Fisker, who we know, we, we know as a uh, really strong Olympic lifter and also a great gym, gymnast. He's a lot taller. He's teamed up with a lot with a, with a female athlete that's a little bit shorter, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Right there, Red Tower CrossFit, looking very comfortable. What I'd like you to remember if you're sitting at home right now watching this is that there's a huge difference between going 21, 15, 9 calories on the assault bike and then onto the deadlifts as opposed to going 90 calories straight and then onto the deadlifts. It's even more important at this point that you don't overexert yourself and find yourself fighting at 50 calories. So your top two teams making their way through 90 calories for the guys, 60 calories for the ladies but much of the rest of the field just now getting into the deadlifts. We've had a couple of other teams complete the set of nine deadlifts. Here in lane number two, we have CrossFit XY, and it's a bit shocking how little we've mentioned their name this weekend as they enter today in the 14th position, and more importantly, 40 points behind the cut line for those five qualifying spots. It's not something that we're used to seeing from CrossFit X and Y. There can be two explanations for this. Maybe the events just aren't stacking up the way that, that they would have liked to suit their strengths. But it may also be, just being this is Iceland, they may be building a team for the future. If there's anybody who looks beyond the current season, it would be the Icelandic teams. And you're looking at a lengthy streak that is in jeopardy for Iceland having a team going to the games. X, Y, the only Icelandic team here this weekend. And take a look back at the pairs that are already done and, and this is the freshest we've seen them look in the past couple of minutes and they're still not looking like they feel too good after this event and you really can't blame them it's a, it's a lot of work it's really fast and not just that you can't just follow your own pace you need to follow somebody else's pace as well so it's uh i'd say it's twice as hard as going on your own but you can kind of stay in your own head do the work so on the left side of the screen, Red Tower CrossFit, they had a 15 second advantage over Arus CrossFit on the right side of the screen, getting to the singular round portion of this event. 
Again, 16 minutes, seven seconds, the time to beat. That was Philip Young Fisker on the right side of your on the right side top screen side of your screen. That's Philip Young Fisker. You can see the length difference between him and his uh, and his female partner in the in the in this in this event. It's going to be interesting to see how they solve that on the barbell. Red Tower CrossFit still looking very fresh though. I like the way that, like I said before, I can't say what's right or wrong. That's up to the individual athlete. What do you feel more comfortable with? But what you want to see is you want to see consistency in the technique that they're not trying to, they're trying to change that. Once they start changing, it's usually because something has gotten in trouble and you're trying to find another way to navigate your way around it. For those top two teams, Red Tower coming in today, one of three teams knotted up at 108 points along with CFXY and Team FFM CrossFit, 40 points behind that cut line for those five qualifying spots. Team Arus CrossFit enters in 13th, four points better at 112. They're 36 points back. I don't, I don't know how often these teams have been working on partner deadlifts. But the thing is this, once you start working as a partner, what usually what often happens is that you start leaning forward with the barbell instead of shooting your hip back, lowering your center of gravity and using your legs to stand it up. Also, you're not necessarily super inclined to use, inclined to use your legs considering that you came off the bike, but that's what you should be doing. Judges' hands going up for a couple of athletes, but most notably, two judges' hands up in lane number five in the center of the screen. You can kind of see it there in the background. Team Butcher's Lab have just come all the way through from third. They were over a half minute back getting to the bike for the 90 and 60 calorie portion. And here they are out in front getting to the set of 45 deadlifts, same weight, 440 pounds, 200 kilos. They'll advance the bar every nine reps. And this is where we want to see what did it cost them to go that fast to start with. The first rep shouldn't be a problem, but as we get a little bit deeper into the set of 45, are they going to pay for that catch up? Butcher's Lab, another one of these Danish boxes with proud traditions of both going to the games and representing very, very well at regionals. And the race is on as four teams have begun the deadlifts. Nine reps already in the books, a little bit more than that for Butcher's Lab. So here they are, center of the screen. We also have our top two getting to the second pairing. Arus CrossFit and Red Tower CrossFit in lanes three and four, as well as in lane number eight. CF Oslo Wolfpack, here they are. Team we haven't even mentioned this entire time, flying under the radar through that first pair. And this pace on the deadlift is a lot quicker than we saw in heat number one. It is, and what they want to do is they want to do a lot of work really fast, short rest. Short bursts of energy, followed by short bursts of rest. Short rests. It will be a nine rep lead for Butcher's Lab over Oslo Wolfpack. A couple of reps behind the Wolf Pack will be Arus CrossFit. A couple of reps behind them will be the early leaders, Red Tower CrossFit. Left side of the screen is Butcher's Lab. Right side, the Oslo Wolf Pack. And this is what I want to see the athletes be counterintuitive and start shooting the butt back just a little bit utilizing the legs more to stand up because that lower back is going to give in. Now this is huge for Butcher's Lab. They entered the day 10th in the point standings, just 26 points behind fifth. As they have nine reps remaining, still well ahead of the pace of 1607 by your event leaders, East Kilbride, as they try to hold off two hard charging teams on opposite ends of the floor from them. But it might be too little, too late for Wolfpack and Arus CrossFit. Final couple of reps, and Team Butcher's Lab went from flying under the radar to slaughtering the competition in the second pairing. They will lead the way with one heat remaining, 15-21 unofficially. Amazing job. I love the way they stack the team. I love the way they're consistent. And I'm happy to see that they didn't go out too hard on the assault bike. Take notes. The 
because that was about as well as you can put a team together with that hard charge at the finish for Butcher's Lab. Unbelievable. The interval from that first pair to the second pair. Now the race is for second here in the heat, potentially in the event. That's about 10 seconds away. The former time to beat as Oslo Wolfpack on the left, Arus CrossFit on the right. East Kilbride will hang on to second provisionally, give third provisionally to the Oslo Wolfpack. In at about 16-12, Arus CrossFit trying to hold off Red Tower CrossFit. And also in lane number seven, we got another sneaky team, the Team FFM, FFM CrossFit. And what's really, what's really giving uh, Team Aarhus the, the trouble, what gave them trouble was the fact that they were getting a lot of no reps because the male athlete couldn't extend his hip because then he would leave the, uh, the female girl and, hanging And that wasn't weight. a choice of, hey, we, we we're going to make that selectively. Both their female athletes about the same height, so they were going to be stuck at that either way. Team FFM CrossFit coming across the line at 16.50. Final 10 seconds until the 17-minute time cap. Red Tower unable to stand up a rep off camera. And lane number six might be passing them as well as Team Nordvest A made a push late. After the rough opening day, what a way to start day number two. And Team Butcher's Lab, they started this day in 10th in the point standings. They might be making that charge up the leaderboard here in day two. Well, it is moving day, and I, they're, sure, they're sure living up to it. Just makes me really happy the way that they played their team. I was a little bit afraid when they were getting into the, when they got off the assault bike so fast on the, in the second pair, but obviously no problem whatsoever. So with Team Butcher's Lab, I mean, that was a team that we, we mentioned here and there in that first pairing, but our top two were so far ahead. Impressive what they did with that second pairing. And so Red Tower got onto the bike a little bit ahead of everybody else, but if you see on the left side of your screen, the, uh, the Butcher's Lab team, really confident, great stride from both the male and the female athlete. And once they got to the deadlift, it was fast work, no no reps, making sure that they got appropriate rest. And that's what took him to the uh, to the last reps, way ahead of everybody else. So the team looking to take advantage of moving day, Team Butcher's Lab is with Nikki Brazier. When you guys, when your second pair started, you were in third place. So that second pair pulled ahead on the bike. What did you have to do to come from behind and get to the front? Yeah, that was uh, these two guys. We did it very well. And uh, it worked really good. I felt good and I also think Rebecca felt good so we just keep going and we know we are really strong on the deadlift so we don't have so... <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it was, we, we, we tried to take advantage of two strong guys in, in the last hit and, and more cardio people on the first one so... I think uh, the 45 deadlift matters a lot. It does. Well, great job. Way to start off day two here, you guys. Thank nice you so work. Much. Thanks. We'll, we'll be nice and, and let them catch their breath finally after that push <laughs> with the second pair. Uh, we did have four finishers out of 10 in that heat. Team Butcher's Lab, the new event leaders of 15-21. Oslo Wolfpack, 16-12, good for third provisionally. Arus and FFM rounding out our current top five as we come up to heat number three in team event three as one heat remains in our opening event of the middle day of competition. Brandon Domain, Mats Jakobsen, and Nikki Brazier with you here in Germany. And we've seen just a thrashing of a way to start this day for these teams. So event number three is four time. Male and female pair will do three rounds of 30 and 20 calories on the assault bike onto the dead partner deadlift 21-15-9. Then the male-female pair will do one round of 90, respectively 60 calories on the assault bike, onto 45 partner deadlifts. Time cap is 17 minutes. And that time cap has just begun as the team's off and running on the assault bike. And this is the split portion of the event. So they'll have the three-round version, 30 calories for men, 20 calories for women, and then those deadlifts uh, that will be at the same weight for both pairs. In your picture right now, you've got Calvin the Fro, Kaiser Allen, along with Alice Mille from CrossFit Nordigan. Calvin is a power pack, and he, he likes to start out really, really hot and heavy on the assault bike. Looking forward to seeing him throughout the uh, the rest of this, if he's going to hold on to that. We saw him pretty go pretty heavy yesterday on the handstand walk. It's a longer workout this time. 
So we saw about 80 to 90 seconds in the last heat for those leading pairs to make their way to the deadlift bar for the first time. That seems to be the consensus pace, too, where they were all pretty much together. And I think this is, this is where you want to set yourself up for success. We talked about it just, just a little bit. Some of these teams, like I said, if you get too overzealous, you get too fired up, you go out there, get the first 21 calories, get the first 21 deadlifts, get back on the assault bike, and you find yourself in trouble. There's a long way to go still. Here we go, lane number one, CrossFit Nordic. They enter the day ninth in the point standings, 26 points behind the fifth place cut line for those qualifying positions to Madison. I notice they will advance the bar every third of the way through a round here in the round of 21, that being every seven reps. And Nordic is looking very strong on these deadlifts in the opening round. But as you just said, it is the opening round, and I know there are a lot of other teams out there super strong. Mom Das Klippen in the middle of your screen right here. They're very, very strong. Jo Joachim Tarby is one of these guys that I trust him to do pretty much anything that includes a barbell, no matter how heavy it is. Nordic through round number one at two minutes and six seconds. And we are still waiting for a team to join them back on the bike. Just shows you how fast they were. We saw about a one or two second lead in our first couple of heats for the lead pair after the deadlifts. And this time we're looking at about 30 seconds. There we go, two minutes, 32 seconds for second place in lane number 10, Team Tyneside. Well, so, so, so use Narishime close behind them. Almost a 30 second lead already after round one. And I almost feel like that's, that's good, but that might be a little bit of a red flag. I'm telling you, it kind of scares me that they start out that hard. I just hope they'd left something, left something in the tank for the set of 15s. And for a, yeah, a decent fast sprint that will then allow the rest of the team onto the pitch. As we will often today talk about the point standings and, and one team that came into this in fifth, that bubble position at 148 points, Mendes Klubin, they were the last team, you'll see them on the right side of the screen, the last team through that opening round. Doesn't mean the end of the world. We saw Butcher's Lab make up about a 40 second interval from the first pair to the second, but that, that is a rough position to be in early on. It is a really rough position to be in. That being said, we've seen, like depends on how you, that it all depends on how you play the, uh, how the, how you play the team. You wanna make sure that the first pair comes out there, finishes off their work with enough time left on the clock for the rest of the, or for the other pair to go out and really throw down. So I'm not too worried about them. Um, they've been here before. Four minute mark off the bike, back to the bar for CrossFit Nordic on the near side, lane number one. Uh, Liz Miller and Calvert Kaiser Allen doing a great job right there on the deadlifts. Just now seeing some judges put a hand up indicating the final five calories back on the bike. So this lead is just continuing to grow. And they might be through the deadlifts before anybody else even gets to them in the round of 15. So Yus Narushme has made their way to the bar as has Nordvest B. But it is a 38 second lead for Nordic as you see them running back to the bike. Left side of the screen, Soyuz Narushme. That's RX perform. I think that's RX performance on the right side of the screen. Doing really well, working together as a team on the deadlifts. Fast, snappy reps. So 438 the time through the round of 15 for Nordic. As we have our second and third place teams just now starting their final five deadlifts. And Nordic is just looking down the field like, all right, y'all can join us anytime now. <laughs> and the next team, too, will be RX Performance in lane number nine. They're through the round of 15 at 525. Nearly a one-minute lead for Nordic. I'm excited about it. There's no doubt about it. That being said, nothing is done until the second pair has finished their work. 
we saw a huge shift in teams in the uh, in the previous heats and i'm afraid we're going to see that again not saying necessarily that some of these teams are going to lose their position but there will be some teams that just kind of saved the best for last so one and two in this heat and also on the event pace are nine and eight in the point standings respectively with Nordic in ninth, RX performance in eighth, only 14 points behind those top five positions. And now these athletes, they're all aware of where they're at in the standings coming into this. That being said, they need to just kind of clear their heads from that, stick to the game plan and go out there and execute. Then they can start worrying about the, uh, the scoreboards when they're back again. So this First athlete done with the bike for CrossFit Nordic. An RX performance female athlete looks like she's struggling a little bit now. Male athlete looks solid. She will have plenty of time to rest here in a little bit. It's just nine deadlifts remain after this final run on the bike. 650 off the bike for CrossFit Nordic. And Calvin, Calvin's going to have to dig deep right now. He was looking a little bit flusher coming off the bike. And obviously that was no problem. We're good again. <laughs> so 731 is the fastest split we've seen for any pair. That pair did not hang on and was actually unable to finish the event under the time cap. Here for CrossFit Nordic, it's going to be even faster. 722 through their first pair. And now they begin the singular round version of this event. 90 calories for their male athlete, 60 for the female athlete, and then 45 deadlifts at that same weight. Meanwhile, you'll notice nobody else with a bar in their hand. Second and third place and fourth place now just making their way to the deadlift bar as RX Performance will be in second. So use Narushme in third, Nordvest V in fourth. All within about two reps of each other. So use Narushme on the bottom of the screen. Black shirt, red shorts for the male athlete of Nordvest V. And the next to last lane on top of the screen is RX Performance, and that shot a moment ago. And you see, this is where communication plays in. They need to come off the ground at the same time. As soon as it starts tilting, one athlete is left with substantially more work than the other, and that's not what you need. Now we're looking at the Nordic athletes, so it's Oskar Amdeshan and Amadi Gidal. They need to, to just remember that, okay, there was a lead. That being said, you can't go out, go out there and go too fast. If you get yourself to 40, 50 calories and then find yourself in deep waters, you're going to find yourself in a world of doubt and pain on the deadlift. Because on the deadlift, you want to make sure that you get good, clean reps, keeping that bar close, shooting your butt back, making sure that you're explosive off the ground, minimizing the time under tension. So it comes down to this second pair. After the opening pair, Nordic in at 7.22, RX Performance and Soyuz Narushme in at 8.14. But the big winners when it comes to the points standings after that first pair at least, might be Nordvest B, the team that entered in third, just four points ahead of fifth at 8.15. We had three teams all within a second of each other after that opening pair. This is, uh, this is gonna be a day where we're gonna see a lot of moving around, but we're also gonna see a lot of teams that kind of find their legs again after an outing yesterday that they, that they may not have been super happy about. about both the Nordic team and the RX performance team is that you start to see they're sitting up just a little bit more. You can tell that they can actually breathe while they're going through the assault bike. You don't, what you want to avoid is that on a longer on a longer interval like this, if you start leaning forward, you start getting sucked into the display, then you start thinking about, well, how many pulls, pushes do I have to do before I can, uh, before I can get off this thing? Just find your rhythm and stick with it. Two of the other teams in that second place race. So use the Rishme in white on the left, Nordvest B in blue on the right. It's not often you see Nordvest B. You don't see a B team or a secondary team if, if that's the route that they were going for in a better position than the lead team but it's Nordvest B sitting in the top five after that opening day, while Nordvest A actually in heat number two a little bit ago. 
And here are three interesting teams right in the middle of your screen. On the right side, you've got the Max Full Spartans. In the middle, you've got CrossFit Fabriken. On the left, you've got Leone from uh, Put Out. And these teams all got on the bike and hammered it. The first thing they did was just sprint. Now, they've got some catching up to do. And I'm super happy to see that they haven't given up in any way, shape, or form. Not that I think they'd give up, but I think they may have been content in going, this is a long interval. No, 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 no. They came to throw down. Max Pull Spartan's male athlete looking super relaxed, pretty much checking out what everybody else is up to. I'm almost terrified when I see somebody look that calm on the assault bike. <laughs> yes. At the same time as we're talking about that, we're seeing the uh, female athlete, Anna Vigidov, finishing up her, her reps on the, uh, or her calories on the assault bike. Her, her judge has his hand in the air. Oskar Andersson's judge just raised his hand as well. So they're about to finish off the, uh, the assault bike and make it onto the 45 deadlifts. This will be about four and a half minutes after they got on the bike. That is a quick pace for 90 and 60 calories. And, and away they go. It scares me a little bit. Um, I know that they practiced this. I know that they had a plan. They're working with Martin Altemark from CrossFit Uppsala and fairly cerebral coaches there, if there ever was one. Let's see if it all pans out the way that, in theory, it was supposed to. Nobody else with a judge's hand up on the bikes just yet. As they begin this set of 45 deadlifts, that bar, once again, 440 pounds, 200 kilos. There's 35 extra pounds on the male side of the bar. As we do have a judge's hand up, and it's actually for CrossFit Fabrican. So we might once again have a team that just flies under the radar in that opening pair and makes the late charge, but already nine reps down for CrossFit Nordic as they will advance that bar every nine reps. RX Performance will hold on the second coming off the bike in at 12.47. And it is a dogfight. RX Performance have been looking great. They've got some seasoned athletes in their team as well. And once Fabrikan makes it onto that barbell, expect some big things. Karin Dijk is strong, and she's about the same length as a male athlete. So they're going to be knocking those reps out, and it will be fast. It will be fast, but will it be fast enough? Because 18 reps already done for Nordic, nine done for RX Performance. As Nordic will have about a minute and a half, if not two minute head start over everybody that's not RX Performance. As at 13.24, we now have Soyuz Nurshme uh, making their way to the deadlift bar in third, about a minute 45 back. And I, I've got to tell you, RX Performance is looking incredibly strong. Now the Soyuz team are making it on there as well, and they're looking good. It was a 56 second interval from Nordic to RX Performance. It is now a interval of five reps between the teams on opposite ends of the floor. RX Performance, they showed it yesterday. They're cut, they mean business. And I would not be surprised if they give Nordic a real run for the money all the way to the goal line. Nordic on the left, RX Performance on the right. We're in the final 18 reps for both teams that have been out in front for much of the entirety of this heat. Again, 15 minutes, 21 seconds, the time to beat set by Butcher's Lab, that one minute away, and that still might hold despite the quick pace we've seen here in this final heat. Butcher's Lab were flying, especially on the second leg of the, uh, of the event, second male and female pair were really out there crushing it. Nine reps to go for Nordic, nine reps to go for RX Performance. This is gonna be a whole lot closer than we might have ever thought it would be. It was a near one minute lead at one point for Nordic, hopping off the bike, getting to this bar, and it seems like they're slowing to a stall. RX Performance has knotted this up in terms of the reps. I think RX Performance are going to grab it. They're going so much faster. Now, have, can they go fast enough to catch Butcher's Lab? Uh, now they set it down. Can Nordic hang on and retake the lead? They're both in the final couple of reps. I know they need the rest, but they really need to just get out of the hole and go for it. And With a the fight on the final one, RX Performance crosses the line. We'll have to wait for the chip timer. They take the heat for sure. And they'll take the event as well, 15-19, 15-8, 28 for CrossFit Nordic. Wow. There's going to be some tired backs out there right now. 
But I can't blame them, the, the, uh, the Norwegian team for being really happy. That was perfectly executed. That was an absolute Hail Mary by RX Performance, making up a one minute interval between them and second and Nordic and first. Unbelievable how quick they moved through those deadlifts. They did it in under two and a half minutes. It is impressive to say the least. Very happy with that. On the left side of your screen, you see the Soyuz team in the white t-shirt, the male athlete in the white t-shirt. I'm starting to see a little bit of a synchronization uh, issue with those two. And that's just gonna make it harder and harder. And as we say that, Josfit Fabriken are starting to make a move. Fabriken on the right side of the screen, black shirts. They're about a rep ahead now. The Soyuz Narushme. Freaking on the right, Narushme on the left as we're in the final 20 seconds until the time cap. Rep for rep battle. This will be good for third in the heat. There are gonna be some times from prior heats that'll be a factor in terms of the event. 10 seconds remaining. Well, we have another finisher. Yes, we will. We'll get two of them with a baseball slide across the line. I'm not sure if that's actually going to hold us be getting to the mat in time. We see the chip time showing for Soyuz Narushme at 16.59. I believe it'll basically be 17.00.01 for Fabrikan, if I'm going to guess. <laughs> but they did get the work complete. Reaching the finish mat is a still considered a rep, so that would be a one-second penalty on top of the time cap. Any rep not completed, also a one-second penalty. It might not have counted, but celebrate that finish for Fabrikan, the team entering today in second in the point standings. But it was all about RX performance once that first, once that first portion of the event was over. When these two athletes got on the bike, they were going really, really fast, super determined, both with great technique, keeping their heads up, breathing through the entire time. Once they got to the deadlift, synchronization, perfect. Communication, great. And they were just, they were so fast, keeping the barbell close. And that's why once they got to this point, Nordic had no chance of catching them. We thought it was out of reach. They proved otherwise. Our ex performance is with Nikki Brazier. That's right, we did think it was out of reach. There was a, another team that ended up pulling far ahead in the first round, but by the time your second partners got on the barbell, you guys came from behind and took the win. So do you pay attention to the field of play? How does that impact your plan? Uh, usually I don't, but uh, this time I saw that we were neck and neck, and especially uh, towards the end that they were, they were just a few reps uh, before us. So. Uh, we tried catching up, but it didn't seem like yeah, we were going to make it because they came on to the last step before us. That's right. And we did, so that was a lot of fun. You did. This is a great way to start off day two here. Is there anything in particular that you're still looking forward to? we got another day and a half of competition still. Uh, for me, I'm looking forward to both of the events tomorrow. Good. But not the burpee one uh, later on today, but well, it's going to we'll be cool. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Great job today, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So RX Performance taking that heat in impressive fashion with that come from behind heat victory, uh, making up that one minute interval between they and Nordic. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything quite that impressive in a while when it comes to a team performance in terms of the, a, a comeback like that. As we take a look at our results here in uh, this event, as it was 15-19 for RX Performance, they take the event by a little over a second, excuse me, a little over two seconds over Team Butcher's Lab. CrossFit Nordic will hold on to third. East Kilbride all the way back in heat number one with fourth, and Oslo Wolfpack finishing in fifth as we had eight of the 30 teams able to beat the 17-minute time cap. And hey, everybody loves the assault bike, right? What does everybody love more? Burpees. And thrusters, perhaps. <laughs> They're coming up next in event number four, which we will have in just a little bit as we the first of two events today. Now in the books for the teams on the middle day of competition. We're at the midway point here in Germany. Time to start the second half of this competition, and that's coming up next. For this game, 
In lane one, you have CrossFit Aorta. Lane two, we have CrossFit Berserk. Lane three, we have Dragon Athletic. Lane four, we have CrossFit WN. Lane five, we have CrossFit East Kilbride. Lane six, we have CrossFit Watford. Lane seven, you have New Wave. And lane eight, CrossFit Nottingham. One minute. On lane nine, we have CrossFit Faction. And on lane 10, we have CrossFit 8020. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. And with that sound, we get the first heat underway. And as always with this year's Europe Regional, this is the first time this event has been performed on a regional stage. For this event, the teams will perform first 40 worm thrusters. They will perform 20 worm thrusters on the first position. And after that, they will move forward to their second station and perform another 40 worm thrusters. After that, they will advance the worm yet again and do 40 burpees on the second, on the, sorry, on the third and fourth station. And as you can see right now on lanes nine and 10, CrossFit Faction and CrossFit 80, 8020 are moving forward with their thrusters. The standard for the worm thruster is simple. The whole team has to move as a single unit, squat down and press the worm over their heads to their other shoulder. If the team does not move unilaterally, they will get a no rep for that press. The time cap for this event is 12 minutes, so these teams have to hustle if they wish to finish within that time cap. And when you look at these teams on these lanes, when you see the judges wave both hands, that means that that is a no rep. And we have on lane three in pink, Dragon Athletic, and on lane 10 CrossFit 8020 in yellow starting their first set of 20 burpees. For the burpees this year, the standard to go over is simple. 
the team has to hit the floor at the same time. And once they get up, they have to jump over the worm and perform another burpee. And because the standard with the burpees is pretty strict, the team has to work as a team. They have to know when they do the burpee, when they jump over, and when they're gonna start the next burpee. And after the team has completed their first 20 burpees, as Dragon Athletic on lane three has done, they will then pick up the worm, advance it, and then perform another 20 burpees. As with all the other events, when the judge raises his or her hand, you know that the team has less than five reps remaining. The worm that they perform the thrusters with weighs 356 pounds, and that is 162 kilograms in total. And your current heat leader on lane three, Dragon Athletic. As you see, the teams are arranged in such an order that the male athlete is first, then a female, then a male, and yet a female. That is because the worm is sectioned out in different proportions. The first section weighing 100 pounds, the second section weighing a 70 pounds, the third section weighing another 100 pounds, and the last section weighing yet again 70 pounds. And right now Dragon Athletic on lane four, they had a no rep and at that time, CrossFit 8020 on lane 10 caught up with them and they're now performing their first set of 15 burpees. And right now, CrossFit WN on lane four has caught up with CrossFit 8020, whilst Dragon Athletic on lane four is struggling with the worm. We have a little bit over four minutes left on this heat. And on lane 10, CrossFit 80, 20, 
they are do, starting to do their last set of five burp, five thrusters right now. So they are your current heat leader. But on lane four in full black, CrossFit WN is catching up. And CrossFit 8020 on lane 10. It's your current heat leader and they have only 30 burpees left. But CrossFit WN is catching up. The worm has been a big part of CrossFit competitions for years on the team series. As the worm tests out how the te teams perform as a single unit. And CrossFit 8020, their judge has his, his hands up. So right now they are leading. Whilst on lane four, CrossFit WN is having problems with their burpees. We have a little bit over two minutes left on this heat. And CrossFit 8020 have completed their first set of 15 burpees. They have a little bit over 90 seconds left, so they are going to have to hustle if they want to finish this heat. It's going to be a sprint to the finish, ladies and gentlemen. Lanes 4 and lane 10 are going to battle it out. Who wants it more? This is gonna get really interesting. WN on lane four, pushing the pace in full black. 80-20 already going really fast on lane 10. 80-20 has their hands up with the judge. 80-20 are really close to beating this. How will WN re respond? And WN win it! CrossFit WN on lane form from Aust Austria winning with an unofficial time of 11.20 and on second place we have CrossFit 80.20 on lane 10. And ladies and gentlemen, don't put your hands down, we have 20 seconds left. Let's show these athletes some support. Let's get them through this event, come on! 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, time! A big round of applause for these athletes on this first heat. This heat was all crossed with WN. They started out slow, but in the end they pushed through and came back and won it. with an unofficial time of 11.20. Welcome back to Berlin, Germany in the Velodrome as the Worm is back and making another appearance here this weekend at the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Europe Regional.
as we close out day number two for the teams with heat number two in team event four. Brandon Domain, Mads Jakobsen, and Nikki Brazier with you here at the Velodrome. And there is the warm once again, a little bit slimmer from last year, from the six person to the four person. But this is an event that we did see it used in one year ago. And team event number four is four time, 30, uh, 40 worm thrusters, 40 worm burpees, 30 worm thrusters, and 30 worm burpees. The time cap is 12 minutes. And here in heat number two, you will see some teams that have taken advantage of the day known as moving day. One of those teams being Team Arus CrossFit, who have moved up to ninth in the point standings. Only 22 points from the five qualifying positions. They'll be in lane number three, the team that made the giant move all the way up to fourth, 12 points clear of six, Team Butcher's Lab in lane number five. Butcher's Lab with an epic performance on the last on the last event, timed it really well, finished incredibly strong, and left everybody else wondering what else they have in the tank. They moved up six positions from where they entered the middle day of competition, and they sit in a pretty good position. Six, uh, excuse me, ten points, twelve points clear of sixth place Soyuz Narushme, but they're only still twenty-eight points behind first place at this point. It is so tight, this is moving day. There are so many teams that are still gonna be able to make a big move. Nothing is safe for anybody yet. <laughs> and away we go with the shortest time cap event that we've seen thus far here as our first 12 minute time cap event is underway. And there are a couple of things that these te that these te teams need to do in order to succeed here, or at least these are a couple of things I think they've thought about. First, the game plan for the thrusters. They need to know if they're gonna go unbroken, if they're gonna put it down, and also the speed they're gonna go at. They need patience on the burpees. They need to make sure that everybody's on the floor at the same time. If they're not, it'll be a no rep. Communication can start, fall, can start breaking down. We've seen that in the past heats. It's not a good thing. Last thing is clean reps. Don't leave anything open for interpretation for the judges. Make sure that there's no question the energy exerted right now is worth a rep. Final five reps. That's not going towards the 40 rep number, but that is 20 reps completed. Over in lane number eight for the CF Oslo Wolfpack, also 20 reps completed for Team Arus CrossFit. In lane number three, you see them with the black and gray shorts and pants. And Team Butcher's Lab, they had a very quick transition from when they went to 20 to rep 21. And this is another one of these, these tricky, tricky events where you may go out there and feel like I'm fresh for the first 20. Let's just go straight into the next. The guy or girl who's in charge yells out, just keep on going, and suddenly the legs start, fall, fall, start falling apart. Timing comes off. Next thing you know, you, know, you have a communication error, as we're seeing right now. The judge in uh, with CrossFit Butcher's Lab is telling him what he wants to see, and that was due to one athlete a little bit hesitant on the way down. Enough about the judges in this event, by the way. This is a lot to be watching for. Four athletes with the squat depth, making sure everything moves uh, in, in, in a pretty good pace with each other. It, it's a tough job to be a judge on this one. And our first team through the set of 40 worm thrusters at a minute 56 will be Arus CrossFit. And this is exactly what I was talking about before, making sure that everybody's on the floor before you get up and start moving on to the next. Clear communication, good reps, making it so much easier for the judge, making it so much easier for the team, making sure you don't have to do extra reps. So it will be a 17 second lead for Arus CrossFit over Red Tower. Also the athlete program right in line with them. Butcher's Lab, 22 seconds behind the lead coming out of the thrusters. And I'm thinking that we're gonna see a lot of changes as we move into the 30 thrusters. Legs are gonna start being a little bit taxed. Your, your attention span gets shorter and shorter. You kind of get into your own little world, and that's when things get sour. Now, we did point out the worm, obviously, slimmer this year. We go from six-person teams to four. The other change that we're seeing in this is right here with this burpee standard. Exactly. It used to be that we would be 
perpendicular to the to the worm doing the uh, doing the burpees. Now you're changing sides. It'll be two athletes on one side, two on the other side. It's a completely different animal. And once again, it just speaks volumes of what you need to be able to do as an athlete. You can't just be fast on your own. You need to be able to be fast under pressure and communicate with the rest of the team. Now, once they complete the 20th of the 40 worm burpees, the teams will have to pick the worm back up onto their shoulders and advance the worm to the next segment of the floor before they start on the next 20. Same will be the case on the round of 30. They'll just do it every 15 repetitions. And our new leaders at the halfway point in the burpees will be the athlete program in lane number one, who are very efficient on their burpees the first time through. And a smart thing to do if you're a team is to make sure that the athlete in the back, all the way to the back of the pack, is the one yelling out instructions on when to get up and when to get down. That athlete is going to be is going to make it so much easier. It's going to be easier for that person to look to make sure that everybody's on the ground. So just keep your ears open and pretty much, well, pretty much open. It's only open to that one voice. If you change it around, you have no clue what's going on behind you, and things can get really, really messed up really fast. And you notice the uh, the cameras are kind of staying on the lower number lanes on the floor, and that's for good reason, as your top four teams all in the first five lanes, lanes one through five, the lone exception there being CrossFit XY in lane two, but it's athlete program one, Arus CrossFit in lane number three, in second, Red Tower in lane number four, the first blue lane there on the near side of the screen, in third, Butcher's Lab in fourth in lane five. And they're still neck to neck. Nothing is set. Nobody's built out a lead yet that's going to be impossible to catch up for everybody else. And this is when it gets interesting because you start stressing in your head. You want to go a little bit faster, but you need to move in cohesion. You need to move as one. Judge's hand is up in lane number one for the athlete program. Judge's hand is also up in lane number four and lane number three for Red Tower and Aarhus CrossFit, respectively. I believe there's one rep remaining. They had a no rep for the athlete program on their final rep, but they are through the burpees at five minutes and 16 seconds. And this to me is where it gets interesting. Now the people are starting to get fatigued, the athletes are starting to get fatigued. Are they going to be able to stay in their lane, maintain the same timing as they had before? Not just hitting the bottom position, but also moving that worm overhead. And we just saw right now, not quite as smooth for the athlete program as it was to start with. You need to just regroup and get after it. In fact, it was to the point that they lost about 10 seconds of their lead with that struggle in transferring the worm to the next portion of the floor as Red Tower CrossFit has caught them. But you see them dump the worm to the ground as they were getting in trouble uh, trying to unify with each other on that movement. And that might have opened the window for the team one lane over from them in the center of the screen, working very fluidly through these thrusters, that being Aru's CrossFit. All those CrossFit are looking very, very strong. Looking like a good team, looks like they've got good commu communication. And even without communicating, they're pretty in sync. Good game plan. That being said, the athlete program are moving, for moving the work forward. So even with a little bit of struggle, they're still in the lead. It was a 16 second interval that has now gone to zero. Make it a couple of reps and make it just one rep. Is Heavy issues here for the athlete program. They might have tried to go a little too quick, a little too soon into this set, but it's still just a one rep lead as Red Tower is about to transfer the worm to the next portion of the floor after 15 reps. And you saw Butcher's Lab, they continue to creep into the picture. They'll have to make up about a minute from the time after the set of 40 burpees. And I really like what I'm seeing from Butcher's Lab right here. Just moving very well in cohesion, all of them. Not too faced with where they're at, just making sure they're doing a good job. The athlete program on the far on the far left of your screen as well found their rhythm now, but it's the second time that they've transitioned the uh, the worm and found themselves in trouble. Five reps to go for the athlete program. It hasn't been pretty at times, but it has been effective. They will see their lead go away as at 7:35. Team Arus CrossFit is onto the final 30 burpees with that worm. 15, and then they'll advance it one last time for the final 15. And they'll have a 20 
second head start over the athlete program who have just made their way to the burpees as well. And this is when it really speaks, I mean, this is when you have an advantage. If as a team, you've had an opportunity to be together, train as a team together for a long, long time. That communication under fatigue and under distress is so much clearer. You know what to listen for. You know what not to listen for as well. So this 12 minute time cap event, we got about three and a half minutes till we hit that limit. Only two of the 10 teams were able to finish the event within that time cap. And the current leader, 11 minutes, 18.15 seconds, CrossFit WN. The only other team to finish under the cap at 11.23 was 80.20. And you see the difference right here in the two, in the two teams on your screen. On the right side, you've got four who's cross CrossFit. They're pretty well synced, both on the way down, on the way up, on the way over. The athlete program, they looked amazing to start with, but fatigue is starting to play in just a little bit, and you see the timing is off. Three athletes having to wait for the third. The third, then as soon as he hits the bottom, has to get back up. And this is a long break before they transfer the warm over. And at least 10 seconds, 12 seconds have gone by before they pick up the warm. I'm, I'm hoping that means that they're just gonna go right into the burpees, but this has been a very slow transfer. They have been really slow on the transfer uh, on the other on the other repetitions as well in, the, in between the other portions of the event. And I think it's a game plan that they had. They want to breathe, want to reset themselves, and want to make sure that everybody's okay. Quick pickup of the worm for the athlete program as they also head to the final 15 burpees. They're only about three reps behind, and they're gonna go for it. They're gonna take this home run swing and see if they can close the gap. A 20 second interval between the two teams is now down to just three reps, and they're moving a little bit quicker quicker than Aru's CrossFit is. This is great. an epic fight, great effort. Great race for third as well between Red Tower on the left and Butcher's Lab on the right. They're still about 10 reps behind the lead fight as the athlete program is trying to close the gap, but just five reps remain for Aru's CrossFit. Aru's CrossFit in lane number three, that top lane with the white coding onto it on the near side of the screen, trying to hold off the athlete program. It's gonna be a close one, but to the line, give it to Aarhus CrossFit, who continue to make a charge up the leaderboard on day number two. They found themselves in ninth coming into this event. Wow, that is a struggle to get across the line, crawling across the line, the last athlete <laughs> for the athlete program. It's 10.35 the time, the new top time here in this event for Aarhus CrossFit, 10.45 for the athlete program. And there's a mix of celebration and destruction for the teams that are done. The next two teams looking to be done are Red Tower on the left, Butcher's Lab on the right. Butcher's Lab trying to hang on to as much momentum as they possibly can. They're suddenly in the top five in the point standings. And yeah, we're in heat two. We give Red Tower the edge for third in the heat. It'll be good for what looks like fourth in the event, sixth in the event, fourth in the heat for Butcher's Lab. This really came down to the ringer between Red Tower and, uh, and Butcher's Lab. I think the decider was that they were just a little bit faster getting to the bottom position, hitting the deck in the Red Tower team, and they did that very, very well. Final 10 seconds. We won't have any other teams finish. We'll have another team get to the final 15 reps, though. That in lane number eight, CF Oslo Wolfpack. So we'll double the amount of finishers that we saw in heat number one, which had two. We've got four of the 10 teams here in heat number two, and we also have a new top time on the leaderboard with one heat remaining. It's Team Arus CrossFit, who made that charge as well, making their way up the leaderboard all the way up to ninth earlier today. And they'll continue to be in that good position for possibly 100 more points to help their cause as they lead the way, holding that top spot at 10.35. So the deciding factor for CrossFit Orders was really two of the keys that we talked about. One, clean reps, and two, patience. This is the, these are the guys who are absolutely out there pushing the envelope, making sure that Orhus got a fight all the way to the ringer. So it's the, uh, the athlete program. However, didn't really phase this team 
as they were just consistent on every single solitary rep. They were patient in the bottom of the burpees, making sure that the entire team was there, moved as one, and that was the decisive, the decisive factor for them as they made it to the goal. Slow and steady on the transitions, won the race for Arus CrossFit. They're in the top 10 of the point standings and they lead the way here in the event. They're with Nikki Frazier. Especially when it came to those synchronized burpees. So what was your plan in terms of communicating effectively, making sure you didn't get any no reps? We had the plan that Philip would say go because we knew that he was a little bit slower. He's a big guy. Yeah. So burpees is rough. Um, so when he could see that everybody were down, then he would be down too. So he said, go. And then we knew that now we can jump and we just stick to that plan and didn't go faster than that because if you get a no rep, it's, it's way too slow. Well, it definitely worked. Great job, you guys. Nice work. So congratulations to Aarhus CrossFit and they can go recover now. After a day like this, they'll need as much recovery time as possible. They'll get a little added time, though, because it looks like they might be finding themselves in that final heat going into day number three as they currently lead the way. 10 minutes, 35.19 seconds, the new top time athlete program. Second in the heat, second in the event. Red Tower CrossFit, I believe they will wind up in fourth in the heat with or in the event with one heat remaining. Butcher's Lab, our fourth and final team to finish here in heat number two. And that third and final heat is right here from the Velodrome in Berlin, Germany. We'll close out team competition for the middle day of the 2018 Europe Regionals of the Reebok CrossFit Games with the 40-30 couplet that has just absolutely ripped these teams apart to close out the day. It is an amazing challenge with what these athletes have to go through is within 12 minutes, 40 worm thrusters, 40 worm burpees. 30 worm thrusters, 30 worm burpees. And we're gonna be moving quick as these teams will be moving quick on this one. The shortest time cap we've seen thus far. We've seen three 17 minute time caps. This one just 12 minutes and this one will move pretty fast. It will, it will definitely. We've seen a lot of these teams do really, really well in the, uh, the past events. They're, they're very well synchronized, have great communication, and I think uh, we're in for a treat here. So you'll note the numbers on the floor. Those will indicate what portion of the event they are on. They'll advance the worm every halfway through that round. This is the round of 40 worm thrusters. They'll advance it after rep number 20. And I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking some of the teams that we've seen in the past are going to do very well, but there may be a couple out here that are trying to make a mark for themselves. They weren't pretty happy. They weren't quite happy about what happened yesterday. They want to. They're looking to redeem themselves. Also, you and I had the pleasure, Brandon, of watching some of these people in the uh, the warm-up area with the worm. They're very efficient indeed. So taking a look across the floor here uh, from this angle, one thing to note in lane number five, center of the screen, you see them in a holding pattern right now in the blue and white shirts. There they are on the right side of the screen. Team Hunt out was uh, basically the only team that didn't change their position after event number three. They came in with the points lead. They left with the points lead, just a much smaller one as a lead down to 10 over RX Performance who got shot out of a cannon in heat in event number three, going from eighth all the way up to second in the point standings, just 10 points separating those two. They sure did, and I mean, they were in a good spot coming into the day, so I would, if I were them, I wouldn't want to change anything either. It's got to be nice to be in the lead. What we need from them today is just a cohesive, cohesive team effort, making sure that they don't, they're not phased by where they're at, but also making sure that they deliver. Virtual tie for the top two teams, as you saw in lane number seven, Max Pool Spartans, the top blue lane on the screen. They were pretty much walking simultaneously with Soyuz Narushme, the team in the white shirts, in lane number two. And we saw it a little bit earlier. A lot of these teams are going to come out hot and heavy. They're going to go really fast on the on the first thrusters. Going to go really fast on the first burpees. Once they didn't make it into the first thrusters of the first set of 30 thrusters, that's when you need to. That's when you find out whether they've gone too fast or not. When they have, communication starts breaking down. Some athletes will initiate the uh, the squat part portion of the thruster before the rest of the team. They get out of sync. Some may even drop the worm. That's when it all comes down to the ringer. So. This is interesting to see if anybody gets a lead, but the real proof of the pudding is gonna be on the set of 30 thrusters. 
So you just, Narishme, uh, sitting in the sixth points position. They're in that, that tight spot right now, six points behind CrossFit Nordic, who's one lane over on the left side there and uh, on the bottom of the screen now. Those are the teams surrounding the cut line as we're at the midway point in competition. Nordic in fifth at 210, so use Narushme in sixth at 204 points. It's really, really close. And as we said before, I know that these athletes know where they're at in the current standings. You know that they're they're a leaderboard surfing all they've got, but once they step on the floor, that's the last thing that they can, they can allow themselves to think about. They need to go out there and just execute, making sure that they stay within the team, communicate well, and get good, clean reps. First team to transition the worm for the back half of the set of 40 burpees over the worm will be in lane number nine, and guess who? Team RX Performance continuing to charge as they now lead the way, as we're at the four minute mark in this 12 minute time cap event, everybody trying to chase down that time of 10.35 by Aarhus CrossFit, one heat to go. And the thing about RX performance is that it's not on an individual level, the strongest athletes that we have on the floor. But what we are seeing is that both communication, teamwork, dedication to making sure that none of the other athletes in the team have to suffer unnecessarily, the way they conduct themselves, that's what's putting them in this position right here. Nine of the 10 teams working on the second set of 20 burpees over the worm to close out the opening round of this two round couplet. And you can tell from the picture right here how close it is. They're all right there on the line. Your current event leader, Arus CrossFit, finished this portion of the event at five minutes and 32 seconds. They were in the third position when they did that. They went on a tear and the 30 worm thrusters to take the lead. As we're in the final five reps for RX Performance, also in the final five reps for CrossFit Nordic in lane number one. And make it three teams now with the final five reps as you see in lane number eight, so use team also into the final five, but continuing to hold on to a lead just barely will be RX Performance. They're in at 5.23 to the halfway point. Nordic CrossFit on the left side of the screen, also done at 5.27. And this is when I really want to see the teams that are strong. I want to see them come together now. I want to see the timing. I want to see them not struggle with initiating at the same time. I want to see them communicate the way they did to start with, because a lot of these athletes are starting to get out of breath, legs are starting to be on fire, and this is when you know how they're gonna do as a team. It's only a seven second interval, one to four in the positioning right now. RX Performance out in front, 523 at the halfway point. Nordic, 527, Max Pull in Soyuz. Narishme, just a couple of seconds behind that. And as you expect in the final heat, you have the top teams. You're seeing some of the top performances, especially in how they're handling the worm as RX Performance continuing to lead, but is near simultaneous with Max Pull Spartans in lane number seven, that top blue lane, but they'll set the worm down. RX Performance choosing to not do that. They're continuing to go unbroken. On the warm thrusters, we've yet to see a team do all 30 in one shot. And this is hard. I mean, these guys are going so fast. You know that everything is on fire right now. Doubts are starting to creep up. They're starting to see other teams in the corner of their eyes sneak forward. They just need to stay within their lane. It's an awkward fall for the front athlete from Max Poles. Well, he was, he was positioned a little bit too far forward to start with. Final couple of reps on the top end of the screen in lane number nine for RX Performance. This is impressive once again. Yes, they just go 30 unbroken. Yes, they rested it a little bit, of course, on their shoulders, but we have yet to see that as they come up to the thrusters to close out this event at seven minutes and 22 seconds. And that is 13 seconds quicker than the pace of Aarhus CrossFit. They are just moving so well. And if you want to go to the games as a team, you have to have that kind of communication, that kind of teamwork in the bank already. 
it's not something that's going to develop between here and Madison. So first place has been held for a while by Arx Performance. Second through fifth have been shifting by the second. Makes second place now Soyuz team in lane number eight. Nobody else yet to move that worm into the, uh, the burpee section. Now make that Max Pull Spartans doing so in third. It's about a 15 second lead for RX Performance on the right, Soyuz team in second on the left. Go back another 20, 25 seconds to Max Poles in lane seven. And there are so many things that could still go wrong for these teams. What they need to really, really focus on right now is that bottom position, making sure that nobody gets up before everybody is down in the bottom. Once again, that time to beat 10.35.19, little under two minutes away. And RX Performance into their final handful of burpees in the first half of the round of 30. A couple athletes wanted to do a, a little extra work there coming into that burpee once again. Didn't need to. They'll have to pick it up onto the shoulders and carry it across. And, and we chuckle about it, but it could be costly because guess who is a couple of reps behind them? It's Soyuz team in lane number eight. And the Soyuz team are doing really good on the synchronization as well. So they're a couple of reps behind, maybe three or four Nordic CrossFit in lane number one. Here they are. They're in their final couple of reps as well, sitting in the third position. This might be closer than we thought it would be as RX performance on those thrusters looked like they were trying to pull away, but they might have bitten off more than they could chew on that pace. They're trying to pick it up here at the end as they mash the gas, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. They should have about six or seven reps remaining. And Max Flow Spartans are going incredibly fast. Three teams right here, first, second, and fourth, with the final five reps underway for RX Performance, who are taking full advantage of moving day. They came in today in eighth. They enter this event in second, and it might be possible they could come out in first, but they're going to have to hold off a couple of hard-charging teams. Final couple of reps for Max Pool Spartans on the left. Max Pool Spartans are going to steal it from RX Performance. With an incredible run on the burpees in the end. RX Performance second in the heat, second in the event. They still might find themselves atop the leaderboard going into the final day. Nordic on lane one on the bottom of the screen. Looks like they might have third, but they're going to have to hold off Soyuz, who's only a rep or two behind them. And it's Soyuz by about a half second over Nordic. So close for so many of these teams. Lane number six, that's CrossFit Fabrican that just came across the line. And the big story now, the team in the blue and white on the center of the screen, lane number five, your points leaders, put out is really feeling the pain here on this second day of competition as they entered with a significant points lead. It was only 10 coming into this event, and they're gonna get a mid-pack finish in the heat. It'll be seven out of the 10 here, and there will be some times for prior heats that will be a factor. I do believe if my math is right, that's good for ninth in the event. The thing is that it's so obvious where some of these teams are strong, but it's not enough to be strong on the thrusters and then struggle on the burpees, or be fast on the burpees and then struggle on the thrusters. You need to be well-rounded in everything, and you need to communicate all the way to the goal. So Max Pool Spartan was one of two teams that finished the thrusters at about a minute 56 on that opening round. I don't think they led outright by themselves until the very last second. Speaking of last seconds, we're in the final couple of seconds here before the 12 minute time cap as the team competition for day number two is now closed. And wow. <laughs> it does not get any better than this in any way, shape or form. This is the kind of excitement we're used to seeing in the team competition. So a lot of the time we were talking about Arc's performance, how they shot up the leaderboard. Max Pool Spartans at event three slid down the leaderboard. They entered the day in fourth. They left the first event today in seventh. They might find themselves right back in the top five with this event win. And that's what you do. I mean, if you get knocked down in one event, make sure to come back as strong as you possibly can, as fast as you can. I don't know. <laughs> After this event, the most painful part might be walking over to do the interview. <laughs> as you know, he wanted to lay on the ground a little bit longer.
but what a race we saw to close out this day. So early in the early in the event, we did see a drop from the uh, the Max Full Spartans, and it was basically just a positioning issue. They changed up the order on the on the worm and came back with just consistency in their reps, fast transition through the bottom, and on the burpees, incredibly fast all the way through, which led them to this finish. They may have led this event for only one second, but it was the most important one. Max Full Spartans with Mickey Brazier. You guys, it was neck and neck in the very end. So many teams just rushing to finish those burpees. How does that push you to move faster and get the win? Uh, well, our plan was to go calm and steady and then really push the last 30 burpees because we knew we could catch the teams there. So uh, plan, well, it worked. Uh, uh, it definitely did. We heard we were even with the other Norwegian team, so we really wanted to beat them. So. Let me ask you, we've seen probably the most carnage after this event. People just laying on the ground, having trouble breathing. How is your body feeling after a couple days of competition already here? Yeah, the legs are so beaten up after event three. This was awful, much worse than last year. That was easy compared to this. Yeah, so, but we're looking forward to tomorrow and hoping we can secure that for a fifth place. Great. Well, great job today, guys. Thank you so much. So Max Pull Spartans seeing both ends of the spectrum today on day number two as they had a rough third event uh, for their standard as they fell outside the top five. They come back and win event number four in incredible fashion. Uh, wow is all I can say about this one. Two Norwegian teams top the leaderboard in event number four as Max Pull Spartans takes it 10-13. RX performance in at 10-20. And then out of Denmark, Arus CrossFit from heat number two in at 10.35, as we had 13 of the 30 teams able to beat the 12 minute time cap. An epic showdown. I love the, uh, the the strategy of the Max Post Spartans. Wait until the last 30 reps and then make your move. Well, you gotta put yourself in position all the way through, and they did that. Now the refresh dance is going on for all the teams and all the fans of these teams. Uh, we're gonna have to give it a second, so we don't have the results just yet, the updated point standings just yet, as the majority of the field unable to beat the time cap, but so you can always find those at games.crossfit.com as they become official. So the teams, they can go take much needed ice baths or whatever they do to recover. We've heard different strategies of that over the course of the weekend. They need it after this day. It's time for the individuals to face day number two. They're coming up next.